There's no arguing that people love their cars. We weren't arguing. They talk about their cars, sing about their cars. Some people even look like their car. Whether it's an old car, new car, new old car, fast car, family car, electric car, brakes car, two-wheel car, no-wheel car, or a car you know is parked around here somewhere. People who love their cars love to tinker with them. Some people tinker big, some people tinker small, some people tinker some degree between those two variables. Whose voice is that? And that's where Super Cheap Auto comes in. We've been helping people tinker for 50 years. For people like Bill, Lucy, Kevin, other Kevin. Oi, get off my car! Didn't catch this guy's name. It's Kevin. Not Patrick. He doesn't shop with us. Whoever you are, whatever you drive, we'll help you make it super. Because super is our middle name. Well, technically it's our first. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to season 10 of the Super Cheap Auto East Coast V8 Series. I'm John Van Ree. Tonight we are coming for round one from the one and only Sebring in Florida in the United States of America. And, of course, Sebring, an old Air Force base, quite well known for big motorsport events like the Sebring 12-hour. And as you can see, it is built on the runway complex as it starts on the start finish straight heads down into turn one which is a big sweeping curve where we go off the concrete and onto the bitumen and then we come down into turn complex of three four and five big hard exit to get right out of five into the big sweeping big bend under the bridge where we head down into the famous hairpin where we have a slight little chicane exiting the hairpin and then we head up the Fangio straight to turn 10 and then we sweep through Collier into turn 12 and 13 into tower down the big back straight away through Bishop where we sweep into turn 15 and then into the fast complex turn 16 at Le Mans and down the Ullman straight into the famous Sunset Bend. It is a circuit where drafting is key and with 42 laps and two compulsory pit stops tonight, I'd be expecting these guys to be trying to work hard together in a pack. And it will be very interesting. And, of course, being round one, we've got quite a few new drivers in the series this time round. One of them on screen, of course, John Fillingham from Veterans Gaming Australia. Um, and, of course, we have quite a few of our regulars who have been with us for a long time coming back for another round as well. So these boys just about to finish off their practice session. Um, looking forward to seeing how they all go this evening. Mark, I believe, my co-commentator, is still on holidays. Um, well deserved break that he's having, and I'm sure we'll see him back again next week. Uh, let's have a look at the field. Some names have come back again. We've got the one and only Jamie McKnight, now driving with Fishy Motorsports. So Jamie's back in amongst the pack. We have Chris Blanchard, who came second in the Super 2 Series last season. Reg James, a name very synonymous and familiar to everybody. Reg, of course, our race controller from last season. He is back <coughs> behind the wheel after a bit of a hiatus with a foot injury. So looking forward to see how Reg goes tonight. We have Zachary Vlashbaum, of course, with us from Vermeulen Motorsports. Blake Warboys is back with us. <coughs> Blake, former champion from season two. So, Blake, sorry, season one. Blake back in the field as well. So, we to see how he goes. We've got Dylan Rudd, of course, representing the Speed Cafe lads from Lobs Motorsports. And, of course, we also have quite a few others in there who will try and get a bit of a mention too. Troy Stone Street's back from Super Cheap Auto WKMP team. So we can see how Stoney goes. Steve Tonkins from JWM. Great to see Steve getting a few laps in. Luke Mitchison showed up late last season driving for Synergy Sim Racing. So he'll definitely be there as we're about to go to Thingo. And of course, um, uh, and that. I'm not sure where my sound's going. He's waiting for these cars to get going. We're about to get going again. And 
definitely going to be an interesting qualifying session here. So just keep an eye on these first couple of guys as they head out. So, of course, uh, we might jump on board with Briggs, Adam Briggs, of course, one of the Synergy Sim Racing Super 2 Pro Series drivers. So, of course, slow outlap is always the key. Briggs off into the sand already. So we'll just see how these guys play out here at the moment. I'm not sure what's going on there, but a few jump on Lolly Patterson here. That's a big off. Not sure what he was doing there. So I just trying to find it. someone on track. So a little bit of pit exit issue, I think, at the start there. Jordan Ross needs to be settled on the run out. So just keep an eye on Ross Sharp on circuit as well. And Visma is going to start his flying lap. So we've got someone on track at last. As you can see, through turn one over the concrete section. Getting on the gas. Into turns three and four and five. Got to get the change of direction right here, not overuse the curbs. And heading down the back straightaway through the big bin. And down into the hairpin, and the Viz doesn't get it right. Back to the pits he goes. So, some interesting combinations happening here. So, Sharp still on circuit. Ross still on circuit. So of course, 15 minute session here for the drivers. Jordan Ross down through the hairpin. Purple sector at the moment. <clears throat> As you can see, typical for Florida, typical for an aerodrome. Very flat racing surface around this place. Not much undulation. Definitely all purple sectors at the moment. And get a shout out to Mr. Kirby in the chat as well. Another ex driver of the series. Gordon Rossi, purple sectors everywhere. Expecting him to go to the top of the keyboard. Coming through sunset, you can just see how this corner just keeps going and going and going. Tire wear is big around this place. You've really got to manage those tires. As Jordan Ross is going to go across the line, and he goes to the top of the time sheet. So, not sure what's going on at the moment. We haven't got many other cars on track, so we'll 
wait and see what is happening here. Might be a server issue. We might just come back in one second. There's no arguing that people love their cars. What's they happening? Argue? They talk about their cars, sing about their cars. Some people even look like their car. Whether it's an old car, new car, new old car, fast car, family car, electric car, brakes car, two-wheel car, no-wheel car, or a car you know is parked around here somewhere. People who love their cars love to tinker with them. Some people tinker big, some people tinker small. Some people tinker some degree between those two variables. Whose voice is that? And that's where Super Cheap Auto comes in. We've been helping people tinker for 50 years. For people like Bill, Lucy, Kevin, other Kevin. Oi, get off my car! Didn't catch this guy's name. It's Kevin. Not Patrick. He doesn't shop with us. Whoever you are, whatever you drive, we'll help you make it super. Because super is our middle name. Well, technically. So race control has just informed me that we did have a server issue. They'd set up a two and a half hour race, not a lapped race by mistake. So I'm just going to chuck another ad up why we change servers and we will be back with you very shortly. There's no arguing that people love their cars. We weren't arguing. They talk about their cars, sing about their cars. Some people even look like their car. Whether it's an old car, new car, New old car, fast car, family car, electric car, brakes car, two-wheel car, no-wheel car, or a car you know is parked around here somewhere. People who love their cars love to tinker with them. Some people tinker big, some people tinker small, some people tinker some degree between those two variables. Whose voice is that? And that's where Super Cheap Auto comes in. We've been helping people tinker for 50 years. For people like Bill, Lucy, Kevin, other Kevin. Oi, get off my car! Didn't catch this guy's name. It's Kevin. Not Patrick. He doesn't shop with us. Whoever you are, whatever you drive, we'll help you make it super. Because super is our middle name. Well, technically it's our first. There's no arguing that people love their cars. We weren't arguing. And people who love their cars love to tinker with them. Some people tinker big, some people tinker small. And that's where Super Cheap Auto comes in. We've been helping people tinker for 50 years. For people like Bill, Lucy, Kevin, other Kevin. Oi, get off my car! Didn't catch this guy's name. Not Patrick. He doesn't shop with us. Whoever you are, whatever you drive, we'll help you make it super. Hey, just waiting another little bit for this to load up as you can appreciate it does take a little bit of time just chop and change things so definitely a very great circuit very memorable of course for the first round of the super cheap series so of the pro series where we had that tight three car finish with less than a second separating the top three cars and we should be back up here and running. Hopefully. Yes, we are. Apologies for that. I'll try and get everything up and running. We've still got a couple of minutes of practice, but I think they'll advance that for us, I hope. Just waiting now for things to kick off. So, gamble fastest and practicing the earlier server this evening. Fastest again here. Man to keep an eye on. So, definitely 
Looking forward to this one. 42 laps for the Pro Boys. This is their last hit out they're really going to have before tomorrow night's round one of the Pro Series. The Logitech G Pro Series. Um, looking forward to seeing what they can do. We've got quite a few guys in the league racing in that. Our Super 2 season kicks off again as well. So quite a few new drivers in that Super 2 field. So looking forward to seeing how those guys run and go. And then of course, we've got our vets. So who can catch Sean McNamara? That is the question. So plenty of competition in that space as well. So just waiting for some practice to run off. You can see here Ollie Patterson really working the wheel coming across the start finish straight. And session's been advanced, so we will now go to qualifying again. So let's see this time if we can get this up and running, hopefully, as the guys are all lining up in pit lane and exiting the pits. Looks like it's going to be one of the 9.5 cars out first. I'd say it is Scott Gamble. Okay, so an interesting qualifying session. Brady Baldwin sitting behind. Of course, Brady, special guest on the Simon Mesmo, Scott Rankin, You Can't Park There podcast this week, last night. So if you haven't heard that one, highly recommend you jump on, have a listen. Extraordinary young man, young Brady, doing a bit of dirt track racing as well as real life commentary. Not too shabby behind the wheel of a car either, of a oh, V8 in iRacing. And Jordan Ross, the boss, he's out there as well, running the pink livery. So look where James Scott sitting here. Got Raya, Dylan Rudd tucked in behind. Timmy Mulford in this little battle pack here. Looks like 
Rudd is tucked up behind O'Reilly as well. So some of these super, some of these pro boys, definitely jockeying for position here as they're about to turn down the Ullman Straight through Sunset and get their lap started. James, we'll see what he can get himself up to. Off there to the left hand side, not sure who that was. Another one off, another one of the synergy cars, might have been Baldwin, I think. Uh, Resident side field tonight, definitely need to get yourself a good qualifying time. Very tough track to pass your way through. That's already two pink pill sectors for James Scott here. Of course, it's one of the longest circuits we race on. Roughly two minute or just under two minute lap times. toe-to-toe -to -toe lap times up front here. We've seen some purple sectors get replaced by James Scott. They definitely are going full bore. Right, coming around to take the flag for their first flying laps. The Gamble with a 2005, Scott with a 2006, Rudd 2006, O'Reilly, Briggs, Ty Delaney in the top 10. Johnstone, Freer, Whiting, Vlasbom. So, Scott Freer, Whiting, Vlasbom. Say Scotty Gamble sits to the top of the tree after the first round of run he, running here. They might tell a little bit further back. John Fillingham getting himself in 16th. Great result there for John. Robert Bridges running the Thirsty Devil entry. Sitting in 18th. Reed James in 19th. Russell Gander, he's managed to get a lap in. He's back in 20th. So still quite a few cars over without a lap. So we'll just see how those guys play out as we progress through. Still plenty of time, only six minutes down. So definitely see what comes of it. So definitely Interesting times, Gamble, Scott, Rudd, O'Reilly, Briggs, Delaney, Johnstone, Freer, Whiting, Visma, Blastbomb. So definitely been a very competitive first flurry of times as the guys all head back now to the pits. Get a new set of tyres, new outlap, do some minor tweaks to the setup and go again. As James Scott heads into the pit lane. Just 
still some big names at that setting of time. Mitchison, Patterson, McMamara, Stone Street. We've got Logan Barnett, who's back with us after a few seasons away. Logan, of course, racing with the Evolution Racing Team tonight. Another change as well, different team. But definitely a few guys. Reg James looks like he's on a bit of a flyer. He's got himself on the board in 20th. Of course, Reg, race control last season. No, great to see him back out on track. <laughs> Looking to campaign in vets as well. After doing a couple of seasons off with a broken foot and recovering. Uh, Stephen Lawrence hasn't set a time, so he's having a look at a few of the names down the bottom here. Jamie McKnight hasn't got a time on the board. Robert Gibbs, the man who pushed James Scott in the final round last season. Still to get his name on the board as well. So a bit of work to be done. For a few of these boys. But our top nine cars are all on out laps at the moment. A little bit of jockeying position by Gamble. He's let Rudd through. keep an eye on this group and just looking for one other name that hasn't set a time of course is Blake Warboyce running on a jury rig set up in Melbourne this evening using a Logitech G Pro set of wheels and pedals and this man on screen back with us after a hiatus as well, Jamie Dyke. The man, the myth, the legend that runs the goldfish on the fishy motorsports entry. And he's about to start his lap. Jump on with James Scott here. He's got his lap well and truly underway. Just keep an eye on James. Expect him to get to the top of the leaderboard. Ross Jordan Ross has knocked off Gamble. And the word on the street before qualifying started during practice was look out for the times at round 159.8. So I'm expecting some of these boys to go a little bit quicker being a long track but they've really only got probably one more crack if they're lucky so definitely hard work here for some of these drivers but definitely looking forward to seeing what we can have happen here And Robert Gibbs has got himself a time on the board now too. He's sitting in fifth. I think he would be pretty happy with that. As down the Ullman straight goes James Scott. The man sitting in third. He's put a wheel off. I wouldn't be surprised. He may have got a 1x there. We'll see him dive into pit lane. Oh, no, no, still going. Maybe he mustn't have got a 1x. And Jacob O'Reilly goes to the top of the leaderboard with a 2 flat 
Priya with a 204404. Gamble with a 20243. James Scott relegated back to fifth. So very, very interesting. <coughs> very interesting leaderboard rolling out here. Might just go back. McNamara still hasn't got a time on the board. So Sean here needs to get one up and happening. There's a few still. Ollie Patterson just gets his first time with a 204. McKnight's on the board with a 202. Tom Freer is at two flat point four, of course. Uh, Michael Whiting, he looks like he's on a fast lap. Not much time left here, so just keep an eye on the boys on the outlaps. They really are only going to have two minutes to get around just about. Stay on here with the big fish, Michael Whiting. Putting a lot of pressure on the Vermeil entry in front. Timmy Mulford from Phoenix Motorsport tucked up behind as well. And definitely backs out of that one is Michael Whiting, interestingly enough. He'll be out of time to get another run on the board. <laughs> Let's have a look at Jacob O'Reilly. He's going to bail as well. Jordan Ross. He's still on an outlap. So I'll keep an eye on Ross the boss. Um, Robert Briggs, another man to keep an eye on. He's about to head down the Almond Strait. So he'll definitely get himself across in time. So definitely a bit of work to be done here as Briggs gets himself across. He starts his flying lap. And definitely. Uh, he's bailed on that one. That's a blow. <laughs> Ross the boss looks like he's not going to set one. James Scott, he is out of time to get back around. So that's him done. So really, I think a few of these boys have missed time that third run. There's a jump on board with Tyson Broad. He's going to bail as well. Jamie Dykes on an hour lap. And we'll jump on with Visma. Oh, a bit loose by Visma. That's going to cost him. He's cooked. Stone Street's pulling it up. Coleman being very agricultural. And Brian Minogue. He's coming through the top part of the circuit, so I think he wouldn't have crossed the line in time. Let's see what Jamie Dyke does here. cooked as well. I think most of these boys are done. So we'll just let the clock run down here at Sebring. It's been an interesting qualifying session. 
There's some interesting names at the top of the board that we haven't seen for a long time. And going to be very exciting to watch how this one unfolds with some guys definitely battling to get it home, I think, here. As these two lads head into the pits as well. I'd probably say we're just waiting for the clock to run down now any second. So as these boys pull it up. Dave Coleman having a bit of fun. So definitely a bit of a shake up to the standing order that we're used to here at East Coast with the Love Esports cars dominating the grid. But we're definitely going to see how it all plans, plays out for us tonight. As we'll see if the grid comes up for me yet. No, it doesn't. So we'll just keep rolling along here. As we wait for the race to tick over. So a very interesting qualifying session. And... We will can go for it now. As the grid comes up, we've got Tom Freer from Synergy Sim Racing in P1. Great effort from Tom. Tom, usually one of the guys that starts at the rear of the grid and comes crashing through. But tonight, starting at the front, looking forward to see what he can do. Alongside him is our veterans champion from last season, Sean McNamara from 9.5 Sim Sports, one of our golden ticket holders. On the next row, we've got Scott Gamble from 9.5 Sim Sports in third, alongside Vermeil and Motorsports, Joe Epicket O'Reilly. On the third row, we see Jordan Ross from Synergy Sim Racing line up alongside teammate Adam Briggs. And then on the fourth row, we see James Scott, our reigning champion, lining up alongside his teammate Dylan Rudd from Lob Esports. Damian Johnson's on row five, lining up alongside Robbie Gibbs from Evolution Racing Team. And then we have the first of our Super 2 drivers, Ty Delaney, the minnow from Fishy Motorsports. And then Luke Mitchison lines up alongside him on row six from Synergy Sim Racing. We go over the page. We've got Michael Whiting, the big fish from Fishy Motorsports, lines up alongside Anthony Visma from Accelerate Sim Racing. And then we roll over to Zachary Vlasbom from Vermilion Motorsports alongside ERT's Logan Barnett. Jamie Dyke from Fishy is in 17th alongside Tyson Broad. Greg Sharp is the next of our Super 2 drivers from WKMP, lines up alongside Brady Baldwin in 20th. Troy Stone Street in 21st from WKMP, lines up alongside Tim Mulford from Phoenix Racing. And then we have the People's Champion, Jamie McKnight from Fishy Motorsports in 23rd, lining up alongside Fishy Motorsports' Dave Coleman. And then 25th on the grid, we have Alan Dawson from Wright Sim Racing alongside the privateer Stefan Lawrence. And then we have Steve Tonkin from JWN, Lining up alongside Veteran Gaming Australia's Matthew Shanahan, whose teammate is in 29th, John Fillingham. And then Chris Blanchard from WKMP is 30th. Brian Minogue from SLS Racing in 31st. Reg James from WKMP in 32nd. Then we have Scuba Racing's Robert Briggs in 33rd, alongside Ollie Patterson from Vermeil Motorsports. Russell Gander, the privateer, in 35th. Thomas Freeman from 9.5 sorry, 9.5 Sim Sports didn't set a time so he's all the way down the back of the grid and then we have Blake Warboys who didn't get a time set either and then we have of course our race control team and Jesse Griffiths is another driver in there without a time this is going to be a bit of a classic one I think keep an eye out for turn two very very tricky corner to get into after the sweeping corner at the start track narrows very quickly and we tend to see a lot of incidences down in that part of the circuit. We'll try and keep abreast of all the action as the boys are now gridding. The lights are about to come on. One, two, three, four, five reds. They're out, we're away. That was a quick change. Uh, there's a few cars going left and right up the back, but it is Tom Freer that's got the jump. There's a few boys look for that inside move. <coughs> As we're continuing on around the sweeper now, we're going to pull it up into turn two. We'll try and keep an eye a bit further back here. This is usually where some of the action happens. Too wide, it looks like the field's all going to get through. Uh, there's a bit of an incident. There is one car, looks like Dykes lost his rear wing. We will definitely roll back through that one at some stage. 
Let's jump back up the front as we come down into the hairpin for the first time. Another spot where we'll see some guys make some big moves later on. Tom Freer has got himself out to a 0.8 second gap. <coughs> if he can get a bit further, he'd be pretty happy from that. McLemar in second. O'Reilly third. Scott fourth. Scott Cross, sorry, in fifth. Scott in sixth. Rudd seven. Gibbs eight. Adam Briggs in ninth. Damien Johnstone rounds out the top ten. So definitely a little bit of action early on. Bit further back in the pack. I didn't really catch it all. I think Logan Barnett was in the middle of it there somewhere. But at this stage, Jacob O'Reilly is doing really well to hang on to the back of McMurray. And Freya is trying to get himself a bit further out here. And Brady Baldwin calling in something to race control there. <laughs> and continuing on through Sunset Bend. Of course, if you go by Instagram followers, one of the most, on iRacing, one of the most popular bends in... V8 community getting something like 14,000 posts the day that the VETS safety car driver, Cam Vcock put it in the roof and the wall there. Made the iRacing top 10. Uh, it's Tom Freya. Still under a bit of pressure from McNamara, O'Reilly. Scott Gamble in the mix there with Ross. James Scott sitting in sixth. Probably don't need to panic too much if you're James Scott. Just be comfortable sitting there. Save the tyres, save some fuel. A long way to go, 42 laps around this place. And then, of course, two compulsory pit stops as well required. So we might go back just quickly, have a look at the Brady Baldwin incident on the Soup Cheap Auto replay. A little bit of a tap there from the fishy car on the inside. We'll leave that one to race control to sort out. And the other one I wanted to have a quick look at was that turn two and three complex with Logan Barnett. He got very loose and then a bit of a concertina effect. to how Jamie Dyke lost his rear wing in that incident there. I did say we'd see something, some action there in turn two on lap one. Very, very tough place as the track narrows and you wind up too wide through a left, right, left complex. But at the moment, Tom Freer, Sean McNamara, fairly close. This whole group here, all within the slipstream, all the way back to ninth. Dylan Rudd looking over the top of this battle. Yeah, a bit of fuel saving from Ruddy there. Tucked up behind Adam Briggs. Briggs's car looking a little bit loose. Bit of a battle up in front. This bunched right up here with O'Reilly. Looks like Scott's about to make a move. Jordan Ross in this battle little here as well. <laughs> Only takes a small mistake. Constantina, these cars are all back together. control on the road there. Brian Monogan, Logan Barnett involved in an incident a bit later on lap three. Might just have a look at that one as well in the Super Cheap Auto replay. I'm not sure what Monogue's done here. Barnett comes in. Oh, a little bit of a tap. 
So, yeah, that's a bit of an interesting run there. Now Briggs has been passed by Rudd. A bit of work here using all the curbs as Dylan Rudd in front. You can see this train very tightly compact. We are around through the big bend. Further back here, Ty Delaney's our leading Super 2 driver. Uh, he is doing very well. He's going to have a little bit further back. Tom Freeman, he's slowly working his way through the field. As we said, didn't set a time. <coughs> Got himself up past Chris Blanchard. He's going to have a little bit of a look further back. Blake Warboys is up 15 spots. He's got himself in a 22nd. A great start from Blake. And Coleman McKnight here in a bit of a battle pack as well. Course. Stone Street in the mix of this. And Warboys on the back of it. Uh, Timmy Mulford, Dave Coleman, Stone Street involved in this group here. Gonna go a little bit further back. Check on Brady Baldwin. He's managed to get through there as well. Pass Alan Dawson. And on the inside, pushes Stone Street wide, allows one through, possibly two through. Warboys coming into this battle here as well. We'll jump back up the front in a second. Keep a bit of an eye on this one. <clears throat> Let's go check up on Dylan Rudd now. He's back side by side with Adam Briggs. A little bit of movement there, lap six of 42. 
two compulsory pit stops for calculations. You're looking at about 180 litres to do the race tonight. So you really need to put 70 litres in across those two stops if you started on full tanks. Good open set racing. You don't know how much fuel people have started with. We have an incident back here with Stone Street. Let's go have a quick look. Super Cheap Auto replay. <coughs> little bit of contact with Stefan Lawrence. Little bit cars loose. Secondary tap. Manages to stay out of the way of the fishy motorsport car. Uh, definitely. It's a going again. Um, definitely trying to keep an eye on a few things. And John check on Michael Whiting. So he's in that battle pack as well. So definitely some good battle packs around here. Some exciting racing still to come. A long way to go. Just trying to have a bit of a look through the field. Uh, let's just have a quick look. Anthony Visma, of course, battling here with Whiting. And race control on the blower again. So probably a couple of more penalties handed out. Uh, he's going to jump up the front, check on Sean McNamara. Definitely doing very well. Of course, this race tonight, good practice for those doing the Logitech G Pro Series tomorrow night. Sean, one of those drivers. Seems to be just hanging on to that group in front of him. Uh, he's going to jump over Michael Whiting side by side with Ty Delaney. Gets the pass done. Nice bit of driving from the big fish, passing the minnow. Looks like Vismas thinking about getting into some action there as well. Going to come back up on Freya. Campbell has shows the nose going down into the hairpin. Thinks, thinks wiser, tucks back into single file. Uh, of course, these guys lapping last lap a 202.35. McMahon's best has been a 201.3. So these boys pushing pretty hard here. Back from R being made to work for it by Freya.
I tucked up in the slipstream. Maybe not close enough to make an attack here, but probably happy sitting back here, saving fuel as we can hear. The strategy will be very interesting and the time saving the pit stops from this fuel saving will be very interesting moving forward. As you can hear Freya on the fuel save big time again. Well, it's probably still a bit of a way to go, particularly if you're doing the third race strategy. And two stops for 14 and 28. If you're doing a constant strategy, you're just getting to maximising the tyres each time. This group all fairly tightly bunched all the way back to ninth, back to Adam Briggs. Hey, Briggsy, of course. Can see the leaders within touch. But definitely a battle. Shows his nose on Briggs. A big sweeping corners like sunset, very hard on the tyres around this place. between Ross and Gamble at the moment. I'm just going to go a little bit further back. A couple of interesting battles still. Timmy Mulford tucked right up behind Jamie McKnight. Going to go a little bit further back as well. Ollie Patterson. He's back in 31st. Tucked up behind Reg James. And Thomas Freeman, who has made a stop, is all the way back now in 34th position. Keep an eye on Thomas. He's quite well known for working his way up the ranks. But the battle at the moment is up the front here still. And throw a blanket over Gamble. And Ross. Ross starting to look to make a move, I think. Don't want to let that gap get too much bigger between Gamble and Freer. Start to lose that toe. That could get very costly. I will keep an eye on this one for a bit. Great battle here. All the way back to ninth. Now we've got quite a few different teams represented in this group. Of course, the other man to keep an eye on, Blake Warboys, up 21 spots now into 16th. Last lap time was two tenths faster than our race leader.
Rudd still doing the big fuel save as well. Great ascending cars and low racing platform. Uh, this battle at the front here is still very, very tight. Yeah, it's going to go down, check on Damien Johnstone for a minute. He is putting a lot of pressure on Anthony Visma. starting to come under pressure from free up. The lap 12 of 42, you can just feel the screws starting to tighten on Sean McNamara in front here. Plenty of the boys behind doing mega fuel saving. McNamara hasn't had the luxury of the tow. Imagine his tyres would be starting to feel a bit old. They're saying with the concrete surfaces and twitching the bitumen and whatnot, it's a circuit where there is quite a bit of So, just continuing on. McMurray opens the gap up a little bit again. So, it just aches and ebbs and flows. Gamble, keeping the pressure on Freer. Getting the pressure from Ross. Jacob O'Reilly from Vermeulen in the middle of this battle. So, we've got 9-5, Synergy. 9-5, Synergy, Vermeulen. And then after that, We've got Lob Esports. So you can feel James Scott in the midst of this. Champion. Great little battle. It's going to go down the back, check on a few of the other lads back here. Uh, you can see Jesse Griffiths. Battling away, they're a bit loose. Old Jesse's battling away with Ollie Patterson. Thomas Freeman in the mix here as well. Freeman sneaks through. And Timmy Mulford. He's doing a reasonably good job as well. Battling away with Alan Dawson, our reigning Super 2 champion. 
So definitely a couple little battle packs around the place. Robert Briggs and Jamie Dyke. Jamie getting past Robert. So definitely a few things going on. Uh, he's going to jump back up with that front pack again, because that's where the action is. One back to nine. Mitchison starting to close in on this group as well. So we're about to have the whole top ten together. He's going to roll Damien Johnstone at the moment. He's putting a lot of pressure on Ty Delaney. Timmy Mulford's the first of our pit stoppers. He's rolled in. John Fillingham, Stephen Lawrence having a great little battle here. And John Fillingham, of course, from Veteran Gaming Australia. And Stephen Lawrence, privateer, running the right livery. And uh, still looking at this top pack here. Then jump on the Briggsy for a minute. A little bit further back in ninth. So his teammate Lick Mitchison catching onto the back of this train. The top 10 cars, he can throw a blanket over. Did say at the start of the race, expected to be a bit of a drafting event. Lap 14 of 42, so only one third race distance. Couple of more guys heading into the pits. We've got Michael Whiting and Ty Delaney. So starting to see a couple of the fishy boys roll the dice. Uh, the battle here would be for Freya and the rest of these guys. You don't want to get out of the train. But someone's got to blink first. Brody Baldwin rolls into the pits as well. Starting to see a few of these guys take their first stop. But no, it's top 10 yet. So, some smart driving going on here. Tucked right up behind McMamara still. It's going to go back to Warboys. Now up 23 spots into 14th. Helped a little bit with a couple of guys pinning, but that is still a great effort. Still turning good lap times. Last lap time was a 2.02.4. Sorry, 2.02.24. McMamara was a 2.02.49. Of course, the only guy a bit quicker than that was Jordan Ross with a 2.019. So, Warboys doing all right here. The rear grid startup. Nice to get the power down. Visma peels off into the pits. So does Damien Johnstone. <laughs> Stephen Lawrence 
in a good little battle here with Steve Tonkin. And of course, Matthew Shanahan in front of those guys. Uh, let's continue to roll back up to that top 10 group. All of them seem to be quite content to be nose to tail with a couple of tents between them. Yes, Mr. Bulldog, that is Shane Patterson's young bloke, young Ollie. Doing quite well. He's had his first stop on lap 14. He's back in 37th. Still missing the bonnet. Pulled up in a few things early. And he's making his debut here at East Coast. Definitely a good little battle. <laughs> Dave Baldock must have his mum's racing jeans. A great little battle here. Briggsy has peeled in, Broad has peeled in as well. So a few of these boys at the back of this group starting to roll off. Gamble tucked right up behind Freya. Put a cigarette paper between the two of them coming down into the hairpin that time through. Had an incident with Reg James. I might just have a quick look on the replay to see what's happened there. This is the 38 Mustang. Coming down into the hairpin, he's just missed his apex. It says an accident. I thought it might have been a bit more exciting, so apologies for that. Um, uh, looks like he's got himself going. So lap 17, we'll see he blinks this time through as we come down Olman straight towards sunset. You can see on the track map how intense this top eight battle is. Need to keep a little bit of an eye on Adam Briggs. He's got a clean track in front of him as we're seeing McMamara, Gamble and O'Reilly peel off. So Freya, Ross, Scott go for another one. leader again back to Tom Freer Ross the boss in P2 P3 championship championship uh, winner from last season James Scott Robert Gibbs from ERT sitting in fourth Dylan Rudd in fifth Luke Mitchison in sixth and the leader of our first stoppers we'll just see how he pans out now for the rest of them here comes Briggsy he went a lap earlier than these boys. You see a couple of the cars rolling out of pit lane. And Briggs comes out side by side with Macca and has jumped him. Let's have a very quick look at the pit time here. And Briggs, he was 24 seconds, Macca. Uh, Backer was 26, so you can see two seconds there. 
That's what it looks like on track when they've all been so closely bunched together. And definitely still going to be interesting to see. We've still got Tom Freer out in front. Jordan Ross, James Scott, Robert Gibbs and Rudd. Now these boys would be looking to maximise the overcut here. Cashing on that fuel they'd been saving sitting behind McMurray in the train. As it looks like Freer, Ross are into the pit lane. Scott Gump continues on. Rudd continues on. Great effort there. James Scott, Dylan Rudd, back with P1 and 2. Lob Esports drivers doing a sensational job here. Still fuel saving. Long way to go. And still one more compulsory stop. L2 for these guys. One more for everybody else. It's going to jump on with Briggs. Briggs has got passed by Gamble and McNamara. So not sure what happened there. Might just have a look at the overtake of McNamara. It looks like Briggs got a slow exit. Or a slowdown coming under the Ullman straight. And allowed Macca straight past. That will hurt Briggsy. Yeah, it's back to life picks for that. Tom Freer, Jordan Ross leading our first stoppers. There's. We still have heading in the back half of the circuit. Scott and Rudd and Blanchard, the only blokes still just have a stop. <laughs> it's James pulls out to let the elite cars through. Chris Blanchard hasn't stopped yet either. But he's all the way back down in 13th. Uh, Scott and Rudd are now in the pits. So let's see how this pans out. Everyone else was stationary for 24, 26 seconds. So we can see how Tom Freer plays out here. Of course, Tom pitting on lap 18, lap 20 at the moment. And what an incident down the back of the circuit. We'll just wait and see how this pit stop rolls out first. And Tom Freer, Jordan Ross, James Scott on pit exit now. So. We'll come back and have a look at the stop times in a minute. Just want to have a look at the Brady Baldwin incident. Try and see what happened there. Caught up with Dave Coleman. So leave that one the race control. And I want to have a quick look at the pit stop time. As we get up on the board. So Freer only stopped for 15, Ross for 17, Riley 18, and James Scott was 21. So six seconds more fuel. So Freer's only going to have a short stint. Yeah, I would say he came in like a wrecking ball for sure. Um, yeah, definitely a lot of work to be done here looking at those stop differences. So keep an eye on that. And the other man I want to check up on, who was up 20-odd spots, is up 17 spots at the moment, is, of course, Black Warboys. He's in a great little battle here with the Viz. Oh, a little bit of a sideways action. Oh, they all managed to keep themselves going in a straight line. And the Viz on the radio there. I'll leave that one for race control to sort out. 
And I quickly check Tyson Broads in the back of this action here as well. Working his way past the Viz. So Anthony Visma losing a few spots. And definitely hung a couple out to dry there. As we can see, Brady Baldwin wanting to get back in the action here as well. Doesn't take much to break up the rhythm, break up the train. Uh, he's going to bounce back up the front. Have a quick look at what's going on up here. Jacob O'Reilly sitting in third. Uh, so we're just passing half race distance. Uh, still plenty to happen. As I said, if you're doing the split strategy of 14, 28 would be your next pit stop time. A few of these guys went a bit longer on that sh first stop, but took a shorter fuel uh, cache. Um, so definitely, oh, hang on to it. Hang on to it, Jacob. Don't see too many mistakes from O'Reilly, but we just saw one then. For those that don't know, we actually have Shane Van Gisbergen actually running the crew chief and spotting for James Scott this evening. As well. There's something a little bit interesting being sent to me. So definitely a fair bit to go on here still. As we said, some different time stops. Let's go have another look at that O'Reilly incident from a different angle. It was all by himself. I think he just caught himself out a little bit on the grass out wide. Did very well to hang on to it. Definitely a fair bit to go still. So it's going to go back. A bit of a three way tussle here with Warboys, Dawson, Mulford. Gets himself through that. Going to go on with our friend Luke Mitchison. He has Dylan Rudd tucked up right behind him now. A little bit of a lock up from Scott in front. A few of these battles, anything to go by, we're going to be in for a cracker tomorrow night in the Pro no. Series. Dylan working very hard here to hang on to the back. 
Go Mitchison. Big dive. Gets the job done. Nice bit of work from Dylan Rudd. Very nicely done. Tucks up now. James Scott, the next man in front, going to jump on with Tom Freer. He has Jordan Ross now tucked up right behind him. Of course, these two blokes. And Gibbs as well. The shorter, ref shorter fuel stop by about four or five seconds. So they need to make hay while the sun shines here at the moment. So these two working well together in the pink Synergy Sim Racing cars. Let's go back, have a look at a couple of little battles. Zachary Vlashbomb, we haven't mentioned him for a little bit. Those following along at home at Vermeulen. Zach is in a great little battle here with Timmy Mulford, Zach Dawson, uh, Alan Dawson, sorry. Jamie Dyke and <coughs> Tyson Broad. These boys having a great little battle. Um, some other good little battles. John Fillingham. He is chasing down Brian Minogue from SLS Racing in front of him. John, of course, Veteran Gaming Australia. This is his first outing here at East Coast, doing a cracking job. Have a look at the minnow, Ty Delaney. Young Ty leading our Super 2 fellow drivers at the moment. Sitting in 13th overall. So that is a cracking effort just in front of Thomas Freeman from 95 Sim Sports. Another one of the Pro Series drivers. So that is a cracking effort to be there. And Freeman, of course, up 22 spots along with Warboys back in 15th. So definitely some battling going on around the place at the moment. Going back to that blast bomb battle. <coughs> These guys not too scared to rub a bit of paint. A great little tussle of these four cars. Just going to go check on Jacob O'Reilly. He's starting to close the gap to gamble in front of him. Briggsy going along for the battle here as well. Lap 24-42. Still a long way to go here at Sebring. Jacob, of course, was doing really well till he had that little mishap. But fighting his way back into the race here. Briggs going in the inside line in turn one. Not going to get the job done, I don't think. It's going to go back to Mulford. These lads are now side by side. Blast bomb getting up the inside as well. Is he going to get two for one there? Great driving amongst this group as Warboys heads into the pit lane. We've got Coleman and Patterson in there as well. Gonna check on Alan Dawson again. Not a little bit of a switch. Last bomb gets a bit loose. Has Dyke now coming through. Cost him a couple little spots. And last bomb on the radio to race control. Stone Street in for his second stop as well. 
We're starting to see a few of these boys roll their stops off. It's going to jump back on with Jacob O'Reilly. Briggsy definitely turning the wick up here. As we head down the Almond Strait for the 25th time. Exit, allowing Briggs to close that gap just a little bit. Might just stay on this camera shot for a little bit longer. Not quite managing to get too far down the track there. I thought he might have put a move on, but he didn't. But that was a lap off the roof. As you can see, it's a very tough circuit. Got to work very hard. Going to jump on with Thomas Freeman up 22 spots. He's tucked right up behind Ty Delaney here. And we'll keep an eye on the 9-5 driver. Definitely looking to fight his way up through a bit more. Nice and broad. A bit further back. He's tucked right up behind Brady Baldwin. Great sharp into the pits for his second stop. Whiting under a lot of pressure here from Coleman. <laughs> side by side. Tough part of the circuit to get a pass done on the outside. Into Le Mans. Great side-by-side -side racing here between these two, between Whiting and Johnstone. Uh, it's heading into sunset. This isn't done and dusted yet. Johnstone tries the wider line.
Yeah, so he gets the quicker exit here. It's a great little bit of side-by-side -side racing. Now it looks like Johnstone might have the job done going into turn one. So a great bit of driving from Damien Johnstone. He's going to check on our mate Timmy Mulford. He's under a lot of pressure from Zach Glassbaum. Definitely some good battles everywhere. Going to go up Robert Briggs. We haven't mentioned Gibbs. Sorry, we haven't mentioned Robert for a while. He's under a lot of pressure, though, from James Scott and Dylan Rudd now. So 28 to 42. Race starting the wind down. About the time we'd expect to see most of these guys start thinking about their second stop. And once we get these second stops out of the way, it will be a race to the finish. So two compulsory pit stops creates a little bit of uncertainty when uh, they all pit at different times and take different fuel quantities. As Gibbs heads into the, the, the lane, first of our leading drivers to go. James Scott and his teammate Dylan Rudd tucked right up behind. And he's going to jump back on with Zach Flashbomb. He's still battling away with our good friend Timmy Melford. That gap has ebbed and flowed. And, of course, Jacob O'Reilly still trying to work his way back under a lot of pressure from Briggs and putting the pressure on Gamble again now. A good little battle with this group here. A check on the Viz. He's got Tyson Broad in front of him who he's hunting down. And Russell Gander has gone into the pit lane as well. from Tyson, pops it off the curb, locks up the brake, goes sideways. That has allowed him through as we now have McMamara, Briggs and O'Reilly rolling the dice into the pit lane. James Scott is four seconds, four and a half seconds down the road from Tom Freer. So let me see when these next round of stops happen there. Michael Whiting's in as well. I'll we'll keep an eye on uh, who rolls out there first with those boys. Uh, it's Robert Gibbs is coming through. We saw him pit the previous lap. So he's going to come out behind Briggsy. And Sean McMara behind Gibbs. So Gibbs, of course, with the tyres that have already warmed up.
Maybe interesting little battle here to watch to the end. Adam Briggs, of course, the leader of our two stoppers. There's Broad, Baldwin, Dawson and Tonkin are in the pit lane now as well. And one of the fishy boys backwards in the background. Traffic here as well. Hopefully, uh, not going to slow Briggsy up too much. Uh, this is the go time part as Freer is in the pit lane now. That's going to see Ross go another lap. James Scott, Dylan Rudd still haven't pitted. Tom Freer, Gamble has come into the pits. pressure here uh, it's about to see uh, some Freer is rolling down pit lane let's see if Briggs gets him here Freer's got Gamble tucked up behind him so he's got Gamble jumped come out in traffic oh wow Gibbs on the grass it's an interesting one for race control to have a look at We might see if we can get that on the replay real quick. Um, let's go have a look at that one on the Super Cheap Auto replay. So Gibbs, of course, already been on the grass at that stage. So Gibbs is way out on the grass there, so not sure you put him out there, but definitely side-by-side -side contact with McNamara. Bought out, trying to get out of the way. Okay, plenty of action. Uh, Stephen Lawrence, Chris Blanchard are in for their final stops. Brady Baldwin still battling away with Jamie Dyke. This is a battle, of course, way back for 20th. Uh, as Jordan Ross now rolls down the lane. So keep an eye here on Briggs. Briggs is our leading driver on two stops. Of course, Scott and Rudd still need to make their final stop. And so does Mulford and McKnight. They definitely going to be tight here for Ross, I think. Till hasn't dropped off the jack, so now he's out. Here he comes. He's going to tuck in just in front of that group. Well done, Jordan Ross. Very smart play. Hopefully he hasn't underfueled the car. So just keep an eye on the battles back here. Gamble playing a rear gunner for McNamara. A little bit of lap traffic in the battle here as well. So 10 to go. Or 10 and a half to go here. So this race definitely starting to get to the pointy end. Mulford McKnight's still in pit lane. Warboys and Freeman up 22 spots in the 14th and 15th respectively. And within sight of each other. So it'll be a good little battle to the end. Keep an eye on that one. As Adam Briggs still has... Tom Freer behind, then McNamara and Gamble. And 
Let's see how it plays out now. Scott and Rudd in pit lane. Uh, just keep an eye on Jordan Ross first. He's leading the charge. Coming through Sunset. Heading down the lane. Scott is rolling. Rudd is rolling. Let's see where this plans out. They're going to come out well ahead here, I think. Great fuel saving early on in the race has paid off for Scott and Rudd. And Jordan in third, Thomas Free uh, in fourth, Adam Briggs in fifth. These guys here still battling together. Then we've got Gamble McNamara. Gamble's just got past the boss. So definitely great bit of driving from James and Dylan to get themselves back up. It's going to go back. This is going to be a good little battle I said to watch towards the end. So this is Warboys, Freeman and Delaney. Young Ty. Now these guys here will be a great little battle. Big shout out to Jared in the chat as well. Good luck tomorrow night. The first round of the Pro Series. Uh, this is going to go back up the front. Keep an eye on the battle here with, with Free. These guys are fairly close together. Scott and Rudd have got about a second and a half between each other and about four seconds up the road from Tom Freer. Uh, some very tight, not so much tight battles anymore. I'd say the toe has been broken out of the front four cars. So this is where the toe is left on the track. Still a few laps to go. About to start 34 or 42. Good night doing the old solo commentary. So so thank you everyone who's stuck with us. Not the easy thing to do on my own, but Mark is hopefully back next week from his holiday. As Warboys is still tucked up behind Freeman and Delaney. It's going to go back another little battle on track still. Is Broad and Mulford. These boys have been going toe to toe themselves for a fair while. And Jordan Ross's last lap was the best lap of the series of the race with a two minute, 50, two minute flat 57. So that was a cracking time that he set for that one. So that gives him the best time for the race so far. Of course, needs to find a good 1.8 seconds to catch up the rut up the road in front of him. Briggs, probably about the only man left on track under pressure from his teammate. I'm sorry, putting pressure on his teammate, Tom Freer. These guys have nearly got a second out now on Gamble. So that gap's starting to open up a fair bit. So definitely still a bit of a time to go here. Tom Freer under a bit of pressure. War boys. He's definitely making Thomas Freeman earn every hit part of that 14th position. They're not too many close battles. McKnight's probably the only other one in a close bit of battle as well. He is hunting down Timmy Mulford in front of him. We'll keep an eye on that time as it slowly closes down. That's going to be quite close. Quarters by the time we get to the end. And Warboys is now... One tenth, here we go. Well, boys, having a look here, going into sunset. Very tough pass to place. Tough place to pass. And probably won't get it done with the tighter exit here. 
Leo's Freeman now has to go tight on the next exit on this side. Uh, Freeman's got enough juice on this one, I think, to hang on to it. Well, boys, sticks to the outside, Freeman to the inside. So Gamble has caught back up onto the back of Freya here. This is this battle here for the fourth, fifth and sixth. Thirty-six to forty-two. Opportunities are starting to close down. Maka having a look. Sorry, Gamble having a look up the inside there. shows his nose again. Continuing on after the hairpin. And Warboys has got past Freeman as well. That overtake has happened. Jump back on with McKnight. We did say keep an eye on this one with Mulford. Two wide again, three turn one. And McKnight gets the job done on Mulford. Mulford goes to the inside. Oh, manages to pull that up. Don't know how he did that. Expecting that not to end well. And... Gonna jump on with War Boys. He's hunting down Delaney in front of him. Delaney's managed to get away with them two battling. And Tom Freer still keeping Scott Gamble behind. Been definitely a tough hit out. Brody Baldwin's other one. He's done a bit of a battle there. We're going to jump on Russell Gander. We haven't mentioned Russell for a while. Been a great little battle with Brian Minogue here. A couple of our Super 2 drivers, a couple of our Vets drivers. And Rusty doesn't quite get the job done. But he had a crack. And they go back up with Freeman. Freer, sorry. And through the hairpin. Managed to pull away from McNamara, this group has.
So five laps to go here. Going to be an interesting proposition. Particularly for Gamble, see what he can do. And Freeman and Warboys side by side again. Oh, great little hit out between these two. Jump back up with Tom, free up. Uh, check Jordan Ross as well. He is just under a second behind Dylan Rudd now, so he was setting some fast lap times. Rudd's last lap was a 201.35. Ross was a 201.2. So Ross ticking some, ticking some good laps in here in this last stint. Not many laps left to go, though, to close this gap. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Robert Gibbs is trying to fight his way back from his little exercise on the grass earlier. Scratched up panels on that ERT Mustang. It's still inside the top 10, having a great little battle here with Jacob O'Reilly. Going to check on our race leader, James Scott. Thirty-nine of forty-two. James Scott leads from Dylan Rudd, Jordan Ross, Adam Briggs, Tom Freer. He just got himself past Briggsy. What's happening here? Adam. Losing a little bit there, so not sure what's happened. Mm. 
Let's keep an eye on this. This for a little bit longer. Gamble now tucked up behind Briggs again. Gamble here, he'd be starting to think about the fact that the laps are counting down. No, that there is only two laps left. And he's starting to think, how am I going to get past Briggs here? Tired of staring at the back of these energy sim racing cars. The penultimate lap. A couple of other little battles. Robert Briggs, Jacob O'Reilly. These two are going to have a hectic last two laps as well. And of course, Warboys and Freeman. Warboys passed him again. And he's get down the track this time. He's caught up the Delaney. A bit of the left, bit of the right. Back to the left again. Young Ty be under a lot of pressure here at the moment. Learning a fair bit, I think. Oh, boys, up 23 spots. Great effort. As we jump back onto this battle here with Briggs, Freya and Gamble. So Briggs back in front of Freya again. Continuing on for the final stages of this race. And our race leader comes down past Barney to take the white flag. Been a great drive from James Scott. Didn't qualify as well as we used to seeing him. Started off the grid in P6. Spent the first half of the race smartly fuel saving, smartly working his way around. And managed to take a nice medium sized stop for the first stop. All the cars in front all went short. And he has managed to get himself up the grid into P1. Some great strat, some great driving. Some smart driving from himself and his teammate Dylan Rudd. Gamble going to go back to that side by side. Bit of lap traffic in there as well. Uh, Tom Freer manages to hang on at that spot. And still battling away, but going back up to our race leader. I think James would be pretty happy with this one. A good little hit out for tomorrow night. Going in as one of the favourites for the Pro Series. Logitech G Pro Series tomorrow night. Looking forward to seeing how that one goes.
as James Scott comes himself around through sunset for the final time. And that is a race win. And he's done quite well there. He'd be very happy with that. Dylan Rudd home in second. Jordan Ross home in third. Put himself on the podium. Adam Briggs will bring it home in front of Tom Freer. Gamble will finish sixth. McNamara in seventh. O'Reilly eighth. Robbie Gibbs in ninth. Luke Mitchison tenth. Damien Johnstone, he's going across in 11th. He'd be happy with that. Michael Whiting in 12. And then it is going to be... Ty Delaney in 13th in front of Blake Warboys. He's up 23 for spots. Tom Freeman will come in next in 15th. Great drive from Thomas. Up 21 spots from the rear of the grid. Zach Vlasbom from Vermeule, and he'll be pretty happy with his 16th. Jamie Dyke started where, going to finish where he started in 17th. And Anthony Visma. In 18th, down four spots. Bit of a tough night for the Viz. Uh, we know he'll be back working just as hard next week. Dawson, our reigning Super 2 champion in 19th. Great effort from him as well. He'd be quite happy with that. So it has been quite the evening for James Scott. I think he will be quite happy with his results this evening on that one. Like I said, it was a very, very calculated race, very cleverly done. Um, he's made the most of the well track buddy. condition that he had early on and saved a lot of fuel, I believe, and also set himself up looking after the car. 250 k's is a long race still. It's not a sprint. Very clever strat, done very well. And I think the boys will be in here in a second to have a chat. Uh, in the meantime, we might just go to a very quick commercial break and we'll be right back with the podium. There's no arguing that people love their cars. Who would argue? And people who love their cars love to tinker with them. Some people tinker big, some people tinker small, and that's where Super Cheap Auto comes in. We've been helping people tinker for 50 years. For people like Bill, Lucy, Kevin, other Kevin. Oi, get off my car! Didn't catch this guy's name. Not Patrick, he doesn't shop with us. Whoever you are, whatever you drive, we'll help you make it super. As I said, it was a great try from James Scott. Um, how did you tackle that one, James? Didn't qualify very well? Yeah, no, um, horrific qualifying for myself. Um, I don't know, yeah, just pretty struggling for pace a bit this week. Um, so yeah, qualified in, what was it, P, P6 or P7. Um, and yeah, the draft's, you know, pretty strong around here. So just, yeah, had to sit, stick, sit in the draft and um, save some fuel. And that was the only chance we really had of a win. So we able to sort of strategize ourselves sort of towards the front. Um, but yeah, really got to have to tune it up before tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, of course, is the main dance. Um, how do you think you're going to go with that? Um, yeah, I really don't know. Um, depends how much we can, you know, tune her up and, um, yeah, make, make it a bit better. It's pretty tough to drive at the moment. So, um, yeah, we'll have to have a long night. Um, see what we can come up with before tomorrow. Bit of a, bit of a Hail Mary. And little birdie told me you had a, had a spot of the night. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> um, I had Shane in there. Um, <laughs> You know, sort of helping us out. Um, yeah, he'll be out. I'm sure he'll come up with some good setup ideas for tomorrow. But um, yeah, tonight wasn't a good one. Uh, you still got still got the chocolate, so I wouldn't be too upset with yourself. How did you find that one, Dylan? Yeah, like James, they just struggled to maximise the quality car, get the most out of it, unfortunately. So, but yeah, pretty much as James said, just feel saved in the. First two since to work over to the front. Uh, no, it was good though. You, you did well. You're pretty level-headed with it. Like, 
I, he didn't seem to panic either of you. And, of course, the man in P3, Ross the Boss. How are you, Jordan? Hello, John. How are you going? I'm going well, thanks, John. How do you um, – you went with the, the shorter fuel strategy on that first stop. Was that planned or was, yeah, it, was, that, was that just to get track position? Yeah, we, in the first stint, the guys were sort of wobbling around up front. So, And we knew what James and Dylan and stuff were doing. But by that, we, we if we just got on with it and drove up the road, we would have been all right. But, yep. um, and, um, but yeah, the car's a bit of a turd, so we're going to have to fix it because it was um, a bit hard to keep on the black stuff tonight. Yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting tomorrow night. I think I think quite a few of you, you pro boys have, yeah, definitely probably not got the setup that you're 100% happy with. Yeah, we'll uh, do something. We'll figure it out. Uh, I'll let you guys get back to it. So you want to start first, Jordan, give a bit of a shout out? Uh, just you guys for uh, getting me into the show late. <laughs> um and yeah, just all the all the team um, at Synergy doing a great job. So uh, bring on tomorrow. We'll see how we go. Yep, too easy. And yourself, James, you want to give a shout out? Yeah, um, obviously all the guys at uh, Lobs Esports, um, Speed Cafe, great to have them on board. Uh, Ryko as well. Don't forget to head over there and um, grab some setups and look at some data and uh, try and find trying to find a bit more speed uh, with there as well. And obviously thanks to Shane and uh, Jared and the job stepping in for a, for a spot. And um, uh, Dylan as well. Good it was a good race. Uh, but yeah, probably need to find a fair bit more speed. I'll have to put the drives on for tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. And then next week, boys, Laguna Seca. Any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't <laughs> driven there in years. So. <laughs> uh yeah, I can't remember the last time I drove there. So, uh, corkscrew can be fun. <laughs> a lot of racing to come up. So yeah. uh, over the next couple couple of weeks, uh, days, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, probably a grid and go, but we'll see what happens. Yep. No worries, boys. Well, thanks for dropping in and having a chat with us. Thank you to everybody out watching me. Hopefully, Mark will be back with me next week. Um, and thanks to everybody out there that's been watching and tuning in. And we will see everybody again next time. Thanks for watching. There's no arguing that people love their cars. We weren't arguing. They talk about their cars, sing about their cars. Some people even look like their car. Whether it's an old car, new car, new old car, fast car, family car, electric car, brakes car, two-wheel car, no-wheel car, or a car you know is parked around here somewhere. People who love their cars love to tinker with them. Some people tinker big, some people tinker small. Some people tinker some degree between those two variables. Whose voice is that? And that's where Super Cheap Auto comes in. We've been helping people tinker for 50 years. For people like Bill, Lucy, Kevin, other Kevin. Oi, get off my car! Didn't catch this guy's name. It's Kevin. Not Patrick. He doesn't shop with us. Whoever you are, whatever you drive, we'll help you make it super. Because super is our middle name. Well, technically it's our first.